with the release of Predator version number three, we saw some pretty big changes to its order management system. I wanted to make this video to go over some of the new updates specifically for the stop loss management. So whether you're using the Predator's built-in stop loss functions, so something like the ATR stop, where it's going to continuously adjust based on the current ATR value, or if you're using your own third-party indicator to set a custom stop order. The Predator has a ton of options available at just the click of a button. And for those of you new here, the Predator is an order entry and management system that lets users fully or semi-automate their own strategies. The Predator also comes with many customizable features that lets users create that perfect manual order entry or even automate third-party indicators with just a few clicks. But this is going to be more of a specific training video for the stop loss system so you can customize that perfect stop order. With that, let's get right into it. All right, so in the Predator properties, we're scrolling down to the order management section. And in this video, like I mentioned in the intro, we are going over the stop loss system. So that is your initial stop loss that you'll see right here. All right, so the first thing when it comes to the stop loss is the Predator is only going to manage trades taken by the Predator. That means if you have another system taking a trade, it's not going to be able to set a stop loss based on that. So again, if you wanna use the Predator for its customization and its order management, you will need to submit the actual order within the Predator itself. Now, the next thing is every order taken by the Predator is going to have the same order management. So that means whether you're using a manual order entry or you're letting it run on fully auto and the Predator is taking trades by itself, any trade entered by the Predator will have this same configuration. So whatever we type in here, that's what it's going to execute. And now that we got those two things out of the way, let's go over what each option does and how it looks on the chart. For our first option, we have ticks. And this is probably the most common stop loss option. It's what most of you guys are probably using. And this, like you guessed, it's just going to set your stop based on a tick distance. So by default, it comes at 50 ticks. If you were to change this to 100, it's going to set your stop at 100 ticks from the entry price. Now, one thing I do see that comes up every once in a while is somebody not being able to set a value less than five. And the reason I cap it at five is to help prevent this error. And I'm going to leave a link for a NinjaTrader article that describes this a little bit more, but basically what it's saying is if your stop is too small from your entry price and the price is moving really quick, there's a potential where you enter a trade and before the stop loss can process, the price will move below it and it will cause this error. So while the Predator does have many built-in features to help combat this as much as possible, just know that small stop orders like this are generally not a good idea when it comes to Ninja Trader. And this is especially true for most of us that are trading instruments like NQ, where the price tends to fluctuate a lot more than five ticks at a time. So for that reason, I've limited to five ticks only. Now, in the case that you do want to go less than five ticks, we do have an ATM mode for the Predator, and this will use the Ninja Trader's native order management. Just know that this error does come up quite a bit on that system as well. So use that at your own risk. But for the Predator's management, I really do try to keep everything as safe as possible for everyone. But with that out of the way, I do wanna show just what it looks like. So I'm going to type 100. And just for a quick example, let's enable lit on our chart. And guys, with this new update for the Predator, you're going to also find all of your order management directly from the panel. That'll be that order management section. Just expand it if it's collapsed. And down here, you're going to see all of those same options that we found within the properties. So just like we had 100 ticks, you can change this 50, 60, whatever stop loss you want, you can select that directly from the panel. So here, I just have a simple moving average crossover. So let's just change this. Let's do 40 ticks, 10 points. So once we get into the trade, let's just take a look here. You can see our entry point is 21,987.25 and our stop loss 10 points away or 40 ticks away 
at 21,977.25. So I think that one is pretty straightforward to most people. It's just how many ticks away from the entry price is our stop loss going to be set. But now let's do another example. I'm going to use the high-low setting. So what this is going to do is it's just going to set your stop at either the low of the previous bar if you're going long or the high of the previous bar if you're going short. And again, guys, like I mentioned, all of the orders within the Predator are going to have the same management, whether you're an auto entry like we just showed with the moving average crossover, or if we were to use the manual entry buttons as well, it's just going to set your stop directly at the high or the low of the previous bar. So when it comes to the high-low setting, our offset is going to automatically adjust for that specific stop loss option selected. So you'll notice a value of zero when we're going long, it's just going to set your stop at the lowest point of the bar selected. If we were to do an offset of five, let's enter long again. And now you're going to be set at five ticks below the lowest point of the bar selected. And again, if we do 20 ticks, it's just going to be 20 ticks away from that low point. But with the high low stop, there are a few more ways we can customize this. So let's go into the properties if you want to get even more technical. When it comes to the high low, we also have the option to select the range that we're looking for in order to set our lowest or highest point. By default, the lowest range we can select is a value of two. And all that means is it's looking at the current bar that is range one and the bar immediately to the left. So that is range two, one, two. So in the case that the most current bar is lower and we were to go long, it would set your stop at that lowest point between these two bars. If we were to change this to three, it's looking for the lowest point between candle one, two, and three. If we were to change it to four, it's looking for one, two, three, four. So let me just show how that looks. And we enter long and it automatically again sets that stop at one, two, three, four, the lowest point of that range selected. Now, another addition that you guys may have seen is the minimum and maximum stop loss distance. And this was a highly requested feature, especially for those using this high-low stop. And that is just to protect the user against a stop loss that may get set much farther away than you may be expecting. So an example being if you're trading inside bars and it happens to form during a period of maybe high volatility and the bar is much bigger than you expect. I know some users were still wanting to get into it, but maybe just limit the size of that stop. So the minimum and maximum is going to allow you to set a minimum or a maximum. By default, it's going to have a 10 tick minimum, but you can change that. Again, the lowest value is going to be five. That is the same minimum we set for our tick stop. But if you want to set a maximum, let's say you don't want to enter more than 10 points, 40 ticks. With a 40 tick maximum, our stop is not going to go past that 40 tick distance. So let's just show how that looks on the chart. And again, it should be setting our stop right here. We haven't changed it. But when we enter long, it's just going to limit your stop to that 40 tick maximum. So that's all it is. It's just a way to limit your stop size if your stop is changing on every single trade. All right, that brings us to our next stop loss option and that is the ATR. ATR is your average true range. And what this is going to do is it takes the current ATR value at the time, and it's going to set your stop based on a multiplier of that value. So let me load it on the chart just so we can see exactly what we're looking at and how it works. Before I load the Predator, I'm just going to load the ATR so we get a little bit of a visual of, of how this stop loss works. And guys, you don't have to load the indicator. The Predator is going to automatically calculate this level. I'm just showing it as an example. So let's zoom out here a little bit and I'm going to enable it. The way the ATR stop loss works is it just takes that ATR value that is based on this indicator. And as the price keeps moving through different periods of volatility, you're going to find that you either get a small ATR range or sometimes you get these big movements 
where your ATR is going to be much higher because there's a lot more volume coming in. The bars are a lot bigger during these times and it's going to give you much bigger movements. The ATR base stop is going to continuously adjust depending on the current market position. So if you're in a period where the price is just not moving that much, your ATR base stop is going to shrink a little bit. But if you're in a period like this where the bars are much, much bigger, your ATR stop is going to automatically adjust for that and it's going to set it a little farther away to make sure that you give it enough room to breathe. And the value that you see here is just a multiplier. So for this example, all that it's doing is it's taking the most current ATR value and we're multiplying it by 2.1 times or whatever number you type in here. So I'm just going to enter long here and we're going to zoom in and just so we can see the current price. So all it's doing is it's taking this ATR value, multiplying it by whatever multiplier you have set and it's basing your stop based on that number. So here we take 1131. So that is 1131. Multiply it by your 2.1 times or whatever number you set. So 23.75. 21,986 and three quarters minus 23.751. And we're left with 21,962 or 963 if we are rounding up. But just keep in mind, as the price is updating, so is your ATR value. So it's going to constantly change depending on whatever the price is doing at the moment. And that way you can always be sure that it's going to adjust based on that volatility. And just a quick note when it comes to ATR, I know in previous versions we had stop loss multiplier and now it's called stop loss offset. We did this just to help reduce the code and the number of switches between our order management, but it's doing the exact same thing. Your stop loss offset is going to adjust depending on the stop loss type that you have selected. And again, you have your minimum and maximum if you want to set any limits in either direction. And of course, if you want to adjust the ATR period that we're using, by default, we have it set at 14. This is pretty standard with most people using ATR. But if you find yourself, you want to adjust it to any period that you want, just select it from here and it'll change that for you as well. But with that, let's move on to our next stop loss type. And that is the super trend. Our super trend is based on the built-in super trend indicator. And this super trend is based on this indicator. I'm going to leave a link on where to download it. It's not mine, it's one that was modified by NinjaTrader and it can be found within their ecosystem. But much like the high-low stop, the super trend is going to function very similar where it's going to set your stop based on an existing level. So here I have the predator loaded and you'll notice that we have the super trend on the chart. So all it's doing when you enter long, it's going to set your stop directly at that super trend level. And we're just going to set this a little farther away. So that's all it is. If you're going long, it's going to set it at the green super trend underneath. Or in the case that you're going short, you enter short, it's going to automatically adjust to that red super trend that's above the price. Now what happens if you enter in the opposite direction and let's say we want to enter long, but the super trend is bearish and it's above our price. It's just going to set your stop based on that maximum distance. So I do recommend when you're using super trend, go inside the properties and under minimum or maximum set something, I don't know, let's do 200 ticks and we'll try that once again. So if you were to enter and the super trend is in the opposite side, it's just going to set your stop based on that maximum distance. So just make sure when you're using them together, if you're not 100% sure it's going to enter in the correct direction, just set yourself a little safety stop just to ensure that the stop is not too far away. And with that, that brings us to our final stop loss option. And this is one of the new additions with version number three, and that is the percent base stop. The percent base stop is going to be pretty much the same as the NinjaTrader ATM percent stop, where it just takes the current price of the market and is going to set a stop 
based on a percentage of that number. So let's do a 1% for an example. We enter long and you'll notice your stop in most cases will be pretty far away. So all this is doing, let's open up our calculator here. We're going to take 21985.75 and we're going to multiply it by 1%. So we get 219.85, so about 219 and three quarters, 220. And we're going to add that distance to our stop. So 21985.75 minus 219.8575. And we'll see here 21,765, three quarter, 66. So it looks like it rounded up to 21,766. So again, it's just a percentage of the current price of the market. So if we were to change this to 0 0.5, you'll notice it brings your stop in a little bit closer. With version three of the Predator, we get more customization to where our stop loss can be set. And that comes in the form of being able to place our stop based on any indicator plot that is on your chart. And the setup for this is very easy. All you have to do is make sure that your indicator is loaded on the chart before you enable the Predator. Once it's loaded, just enable it. And from here, we're going to go to our stop loss list and you'll see, especially if the market is closed or you're on playback like we're doing for this example and you have it paused and there's no price movement, it's not going to show anything in your list. In order for these indicators to load, you need some sort of a price movement. So typically, by the time you see the PNL, everything is good to go. So if you go back to your stop loss on your chart trader panel, you're going to see this EMA plot that we loaded before we enabled the Predator. So all you have to do is select it. And now when you enter a trade, it's going to set your stop loss directly on that plot. And yes, of course, you can trail that plot as well. I'm going to save the trail stops for next week's video because there's a lot more to cover in there as well. And I just want to make sure we touch on everything. So for this example only, we're just doing the stop loss. All right, but now what are we going to do if we have some sort of an indicator that gives us two separate stop loss points between your long and your short. So if we were to go into our stop loss list, we'd have to select swing low, we'd have to enter, but then if we wanted to enter short, we'd have to switch back and go to the opposite direction. That takes too long, it's too much trouble. So what we've added into the Predator is this nice little stop split option. Just go to these arrows up here, it's going to split your long and your short into two entirely different orders. So from here, you can select the stop order you want for your longs. So in this case, I want the swing low and my short stop, I want the swing high. And now we can enter quickly without having to switch our stop loss. And of course, you can also add offset directly from the panel. So if you wanted maybe five takes beyond that swing point, you're able to do that as well. And again, this will work with any third party indicator plot as long as it's some sort of an exposed plot, the Predator should be able to read it after that initial load time or price change. So I think I'm going to cut the video here. I wanted to keep this video specific to our stop loss in order to update our user guide. If you guys are looking for a free trial or have any questions, join us on Discord. You'll find a ton of information in there or visit our website or email us support at tradesaver.com. But I hope you guys found this video useful. As always, take care. Enjoy.